Hello everybody, this is Niklas Hoshimet and today I would like to take you back to 1987, the World Championship match between Garry Kasparov and Anatoly Karpov at the time. Garry Kasparov was world champion and in the final game of the match he was trailing by one point and he needed to win to equalize the score and by doing so retain the title. And I would actually like to enter the final position, which might be a little bit curious, but it was a moment where maybe if Kapov had played on, chess history could have been different. So let's get to it before we begin, of course, the comment of the day, and it's by XI Leon. And he says, as an average player, I'd gone through the game and had lots of questions about various points. You have covered all of them then in some than some in terms of chess principles. Thanks so much for this post. I've also just downloaded your ebook and posted you on my Facebook. Well, thanks so much, XI Leon. Appreciate it a lot. And to you guys, if you have any suggestions for how I can make my game analysis better or what else to include, maybe more on chess principle, less concrete variations, I don't know. Let me know in the comments and I'm looking forward to your feedback. Now, let's get to the position at hand. White had just played the move king to g2, defending the pawn on f2. And the position is completely winning for white, that's correct. You can also see the variation bar on the left. But black had still one trick he could have tried. Here Kapov actually resigned and Kasparov stayed world champion. So what is the trick that I was talking about? So let's make a few moves. And how is white actually winning this position? Well. He needs to win one of those pawns, right? Either e6 or g6. And the obvious choice would be to win the pawn on g6. But after bishop e4, queen b4, here's the trick. Let's turn off the engine. Somehow there's sometimes some, some hiccups. Sorry about that. So um, here's the trick. And of course, you need to do some acting maybe as well, right? So if you're a cop of at this moment, you're just playing a move like dejected and you're looking to the side and like, I don't know, <laughs> maybe not overdo it, but uh, look to the side, hanging in the chair like this and, um, and being completely destroyed, looking like that. Okay, so if, if that ever happens in your own game, you need to do, put up some acting uh, to lure your opponent in making a quick move and luring your opponent into thinking it's all over and I can play whatever and just win. So here after queen b4, if bishop takes g7, that would be a terrible mistake because now black can take, queen takes, and white is up two pawns, but there's a stalemate. Queen b7 check, king to h2, doesn't matter, f3, that does not matter because black just has a desperado queen and he has to get rid of the queen. Queen g2 check and now it's a stalemate. And then Karpov would have would have won the title back from Kasparov and become world champion. Of course, White can avoid that. He has to be a little pre bit precise. He can go f3 here, defend the bishop, now queen d2 check, king h3, queen b4 back. And okay, probably there are many ways, but for example, now White could actually take on g6 because after knight takes, queen takes, black doesn't have a good way to give up his queen. If he puts it on g4, white takes, and he, has, he can still take with the h-pawn. Actually, let's show this because this is funny. Here, white only has one move to win. King takes g4 is a draw, as is king g2 and king h2, but after the queen takes g4, black has some space again. So, this doesn't work for black and neither does queen takes h4 when white doesn't take but he plays king g2 and the problem for black is now if he gives up the queen on h2 let's say then suddenly this pawn can move again and white is also winning. So I think that would have been a good try and turn out that both players Kasparov and Karpov did not see the stalemate trick. Otherwise, Karpov, I'm sure, would have tried it if he had seen this idea. So what's the takeaway? Why am, why am I showing you this? Well, for one, I found it quite an interesting moment in chess history. And for the other, there's a lesson in here. Always try to find resources until the very end. Always try to set some traps, even if you're completely lost. And maybe if it requires some acting as well on your side, well, why not? 
<laughs> that's completely legitimate and in this way if you're always trying to put up the most resistance you can you can save a lot of loss positions and um, win some more points i think it's a very very important skill to be resourceful and i think one of the res most re most resourceful players is hikaru nakamura so you can if you want to study some of his games where he's worse or lost and how he's finding tricks and putting up the most resistance posing the most problems so that eventually his opponents make mistakes and he comes back into a game all right and also one question for you guys would you like to see more games from the Kasparov Cup of Era, where they played so many matches and games against each other. If so, let me know in the comments if that's interesting to you. That's it from me for today, and I'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.